What up? It's your boy T-Bur, her reaction. Today is Films Friday, well, Kill Count Friday as well, too, as um, we'll check out Kill Count Day. It's probably going to be my only reaction today because I got to start packing for my trip, my uh, vacation next week as well, this coming week as well, too, as I mean, Fed is going to be out. Yeah, out on the bow because we had a, a wedding at 10. I'm also, we also kind of helping with the wedding at the DJ. I think she's doing full as well, too. But anyway, so this week is going to be is a, a, a alter, mm, at that, that, that. alternative kill count week where, um, based off of real kill count weeks, you know, which is uh, kill counts, kisses of kill counts that are our fan. Hold on. I'm back. So anyway, this week is uh, a turn to kill with Kel Kel Week with Kisses of Kill Counts that are fan film, fan, um, fan film based short films, web series, animation, comic video game, etc. Um, I mean, something that uh, Demi was doing over the, during the writer's writer strike. I believe, believe, believe right, right, right. There was some of the selection or post away before the right strike, but I want to add to it. Anyway. This week's the last week we're doing, I'm doing in pairs as once this, after this kill count will react to a day, it'll be enough to do five, and you know, the poll, it goes up to five, so, um, that'd be sad if I have a single selection going forward. Anyway, the pairs was, the guy who didn't like me was go and I paired it up with Silver Screen, so Silver Screen was, um, taken off from the kill, from the last poll week, because I had to lose the previous one for that. Uh, the other pairs are More Common X and Crypt TV, Too Many Cooks and Dylan Nightmare. And with the, with the, hold on, let me make sure I got the right one. Yes. And with the um, results of, the highest results of 60%, the winning pair was Scotty who liked, the guy who didn't like musical and the super screen, which is the musical duo that I had paired up when I first did this. So anyway, that being said, between them two, which one will be the Kill Count Day? Will I be seeing my first kill horror musical as a Kill Count, or see another kill uh, a horror music video? And with the result, with seventy one percent, we are looking at my first horror musical as a Kill Count. As the guy who didn't like musical is the Kill Count of the night. So that being said, this one is a total first I, for. Kill Count Watts and me ever really hearing about it. I know that it's probably been done, but a, I almost, then again, I'm not sure if it's considered a horror kill. I won't can't, can't consider everything a horror that's on, on Demi's Kill Count because, you know, it's, it's many Kill Counts. But in the same time, this is my first time seeing a Kill, uh, a kill Count for a musical. So it's gonna be interesting. So it's probably gonna be it's not gonna be graphic bloody or anything. So that's that's for one. Unless they unless I really need to go to music and see what they do with these live plays. But other than that, it's gonna be interesting as well too. So this one came this came out in 2018. And like I said, Dummy won all out to keep the kill count going on during the writer strikes and they dug deep in into a musical. So no, the riot strike was um while it was cool, while it was was being was heavy expected, it was probably hurting them, but at the same time open gave them open their minds up a little more too, cause this is very uh open minded moment here. So anyway, we're gonna check out the guy that didn't like musical. Let me make sure my headphones are straight, cause I I'm headphones is on that's on the Nova, so it's on so so, so you're gonna hear it. So anyway, sorry I'm stuttering, you know what I say I got a space issue. But anyway, what I'll for to do, let's get it. Welcome to The Kill Count, where we tally up the victims in all our favorite horror hey, media. Bill. I'm James A. Janice, and today we're looking at The Guy Who Didn't Like Musicals, first performed in 2018. The Guy Who Didn't Like Musicals is a stage production, the first one ever covered on this show. It takes place in the small town of Hatchetfield as it's overtaken by an alien infection that turns the oh. townsfolk into singing, dancing pod people. The Guy Who Didn't Like Musicals is the 11th show by Star Kid Productions, a group founded by brothers Nick and Matt Lang, Brian Holden, and Darren Chris. All four of them attended the University of Michigan, just like yours truly. In fact, Star Kid was formed in That's, 2009 during my. Well, that explain why they picked this one as well too. They're from Michigan alumni. I saw some right there. 
sophomore year. I never saw any of their shows in person, which was dumb on my part in retrospect, but I distinctly remember the flyers for their second show, Me and My wow. Dick, posted all <laughs> over campus. Team Starkid really blew up when they uploaded their first show, a very Potter musical, to a nascent YouTube. They didn't even mean for it to be public, they just didn't feel like making DVDs for the cast. Wow. Thanks to Harry Potter hype around the sixth film, the video exploded in views, leading wow. to sequels and a whole series of parody musicals. Awesome. All of the 13 shows so far, and the two national tours were co-written by Nick and Matt Lang, who I never knew in college. But I spoke to Nick ahead of this episode, and it felt like talking to an old friend. Must be that Michigan connection. Go right. blue. The guy who didn't like musicals is- It's always crazy like that if you find, when you find um, somebody, you find out somebody that went to your school or is famous as well too, whether it's high school, college, hell, even elementary school. It's interesting, always interesting to find it out. The group's first foray into horror and kicked off a multimedia, multiversal series with each work honing in on a different subgenre. Tying them all together is their setting, the town of Hatchetfield. Guy is an original sci-fi horror story, though Nick's the first to admit it's hugely referential and influenced by tropes in specific films. Most notably, Invasion of the Body Snatchers. The show ran from October 11th to November 4th in 2018 at the Matrix Theater in Los Angeles. The filmed version, uploaded in December that same year, was pieced together from three live performances and some pickups without an audience to get close-ups and more blood effects. In the live show, so they did have a, you know, uh, you can't have them spitting out blood and it'll leave it all over the place and people slip on fake blood and things like that. If you're a current or recovering musical theater kid, I highly recommend checking out the full production on YouTube. It's a loving tribute to horror with some hilarious people and impressively catchy tunes. Of course, the best way to listen to catchy tunes like those is with a good set of earbuds, earbuds like Ray, from today's Ray sponsor, Bands. Raycon. Raycon, Raycon is, is actually good. celebrating their six year anniversary soon, but we're also celebrating our four year anniversary of Raycon mm -hmm. sponsoring the Kill Count. The first was way back in 2019's The Dentist. <laughs> Remember okay. those? So needless to say, any regular Kill Count viewer knows how much Chelsea and I love our Raycons. Thanks to their high quality audio, 32 hours of battery life, and perfect in-ear fit, my Raycon earbuds are my daily driver for listening to music and podcasts. Whether I'm working out, taking Molly on a walk, or just cleaning the house or my David Bowie shoes. We love ours, <laughs> and we're not the only ones. Raycon earbuds have 78,000 five-star reviews. Mm. And now is the best time for you to dive into the Raycon world yourself. To celebrate their six-year anniversary, Raycon is offering 20% off site-wide, with select products even 40% off. What can you get site-wide? Of course, there's the tried and true sound offerings, from four types of earbuds to two types of headphones to a Bluetooth speaker. But this year, they've also expanded into Raycon Home and Raycon PowerTech. You can celebrate Raycon turning six at buyraycon.com slash deadmeat and use code birthday to get 20 to 40% off site wide. That's buyraycon.com slash deadmeat. Use them to listen to all the musicals you love. Mm -hmm. How many people will lose their musical minds in this curtain call of Cthulhu? Well, it's high time we find out because way. the apotheosis is upon us. The musical begins, as most do, with an opening number. He's a guy who didn't like musical. Oh, and it's a title song! The titular hater is Paul, played by John Madison, who lives in the small town of Hatchetfield. He's good at his job, but a bit lacking in people skills. Were you gonna sign up for the company softball league? No. Oh. Uh, well, it, it might be fun. Yeah. I don't want to, though. His co-workers include sweater-weathered Charlotte, who's been struck with a case of Judy Garlingitis. Don't you think Lord. I'm tired, too? Office bully Ted, who's been struck with a case of mid-aughts humor. My wife! <laughs> and Paul's best friend Bill, who's been struck with a case of being a lame dad to his teenage daughter Alice. She's been hanging out with the wrong crowd recently. You're either in the smoke club or you're out! <laughs> God, I love Lauren Lopez's unhinged little double toe dance there. Bill hopes <laughs> to be a cool dad by taking Alice out to a show. The touring production of Mamma Mia! He asks Paul if he joined them, but true to his nature, he declines and instead heads to his local coffee shop. He's nursing a crush on one of the. I gotta say, they got an interesting way of, of having mics on them as well, too, because I know that's what they're like. What's his always hair? This is Mike as well, too. And I think the, he got something like that as well, too. Barista's Emma. And it turns out they have a lot in common, since Emma hates the new Cold Stone inspired tip for a song policy. I mean, because if I have to sing for it, it's not really a tip, right? <laughs> 
It's just like I have another shitty paying job on top of my already shitty paying job. Though he's a bit awkward and she's quite feisty, their flirting is mostly successful. On his way out, Paul gets into a foreshadowy shouting match with a pushy Greenpeace girl. And you come on a little strong with that whole save the planet bit, as if I'm gonna do that single-handedly. Their argument is interrupted by a mysterious shape in the catwalk clouds. They see something coming from the sky. What is... That. The whole affair is viewed all over town, including by Charlotte, who's having a whole affair with Ted. It's a fair affair, though, since Charlotte's cop husband Sam is shacking up with Emma's coffee shop co-worker Zoe. Looks like they're heading to Mamma Mia, both literally and, like, in bed. The next morning's news is abuzz with talk of alien meteors, but Sean Paul of the Dead here doesn't catch it. Sean and Paul something of the else has fallen to the ground here in Hatchetfield, this time from outer space. The meteor came... On his commute to work, he finds the townsfolk of Hatchetfield have come down with a jitterbug. They're singing and dancing about how good a day it is. Hell, even this unhoused feller is apparently fine with his circumstances. The world is my house. The dogs are my food. The dogs are my food is a hilarious lyric to sing. Sorry, Molly. Feels like it'd be a line in Tim Robinson's skeleton song. La di da da day is my favorite number in the show. The chorus is infectious, no pun intended, with its cascade of time signatures. La di da da, la di da da, la di da da day. I also love the underlying bass line. Okay, okay, thank you. Hey, thank you, God bless you, man. Um, and the psychedelic guitar is a nice touch on top. You sing a duet. Oh, a dance of style. Or, <laughs> or I'll make you a bet. These people are all infected, meaning their human forms have been killed. So we can add five of these chorus line converts to the count. The Greenpeace okay. girl, Joey Richter's vagrant, and three other townsfolk whom we saw in human form prior to their Broadway body snatching. We won't count the other two singers here because we never met those characters pre-infection. If you're new here, that might not make sense right away, but like, think about all the zombie extras you see in zombie exactly. movies who we never knew as people. I ain't counting that shit. Paul gets to work and tries to tell his co-workers about the freaky flash mob he saw, but he's pulled away for a meeting with his boss, Mr. Davidson, a guy who emanates manic Bill Lumberg uh -oh. vibes. Turns out Mr. Davidson has also become part of the uh -oh. alien ensemble. In office space, no one can hear you scream. He pesters Paul in the form of a reverse I want song. What's that one concrete goal that motivates all your actions? I don't think I have one of those. Well, then how's anyone supposed to sympathize with you, Paul? What do you want, Paul, is less of a big number and more of a comedy act, especially when it slows things down to explore what Mr. Davidson wants from his wife. I want you to choke me <laughs> while I jerk off. <laughs> Jeff's performance is hey, yo. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I was not expecting it to be this hilarious. Oh, shit. <laughs> Jeff Blim's performance is hammy and over the top, but it wins me over because he's so committed to having tears. such high energy. He's probably just eager to perform all these songs Lord. since they're his. Blim wrote the music and lyrics for the show. It was his second time doing so for a Star okay. Kid show after Chill the trail to and he'd go okay. on to write the music and lyrics for all of the Hatchetfield shows. Oh, nice. Paul flees his boss and heads to the coffee shop, where he finds Emma with pep in her step. Coffee no! No! Calm down. Why? She's just following company oh. policy, which now includes a whole song and dance number. She has to perform it with her two infected co-workers, Damn Nora it. and Zoe. Get your cup of roasted coffee, your morning cup of Joey. This number is hilarious just because of how over it Emma is. Great physical comedy from Lauren Lopez again. Decaf? What? So Decaf? What? <laughs> Oi, oi, oi. Cup of Roasted Coffee is based on some song called Solid Potato Salad by the Ross uh -oh. Sisters. Solid potato salad boy. Take my plate, fill it up, and bring it right back. But it also reminds me of You Could Drive a Person Crazy from Company. You could drive a person crazy. You could drive a person mad. Is that a nigga? Emma realizes something is wrong. Oh, that's a Nika Rose one here. We're right now familiar with Nika Rose that she plays a uh, Princess Tiara, as well as um, she's on Dream Girls, and for the Hood fans, she's a uh, old Drew Boss from uh, Power. Song when the song continues past the choreography she learned. An even more telltale sign is when the cafe's customers start having black coffee mm. coughs or a uh, blue coffee cough. Uh oh. Uh -oh. The poison patrons have joined the party, so Paul and Emma book it out of there. They escape through the audience and into a nearby nice. alleyway where they're reunited with and scared by Paul's co-workers. You scared the shit out of us. 
Well, how the hell am I supposed to pop out of a trash can and not scare the shit out of you? They say that downtown Hatchetfield's been overtaken by dancing. But don't worry, Charlotte's called her cop husband Sam to help. Too bad Sam's doing the cop rock by the time he arrives, Corrupt having already been infected. <laughs> He's a corrupted cop. <laughs> Dead. Show me your hands, show me those jazz hands. Get them up, or you'll end up in cops. He needs Lord. backup, and he gets it with two backup singers. But again, we never met them pre-infection, so they don't count. Show Me Your Hands is another Blimled song with a lot of funny lyrics. You better empty out all of them pockets. But oh. don't empty out all of them pockets. Yeah, we're cops. Yeah, we're cops. And we make sense. I love the part with layered singing that includes Robert Mannion wailing like a siren. Manion also adds a lot to this with his wild dancing. <laughs> Yo, what's that lower back, dude? Ted the Grouch hey, manages coffee? to take Sam out with a garbage can lid, allowing the humans to gain the upper hand. It sends the other cops scrambling and, according to the YouTube captions, making alien slash turkey noises. <laughs> The trash bashing cracks open Sam's head, Ooh. leaving his thin blue mind all over the floor. Wow, Flim had to have that thing under his hat for that whole number, huh? In order to study the Go Blue brain, Emma suggests they link up with her kooky community college instructor, Professor Higgins. What do they have, a Janet Weiss, Dr. Scott thing going on? We saw Higgins earlier when the meteorite came down, looking like Carl Sagan and channeling his best Doc Brown. God! And his best Doc Beetlejuice. It's showtime! <laughs> He's currently listening to and getting quite excited about the news. And no accessible means off the island. Wait. Hatchetfield's an island? Did we know that already? We didn't, but it's true. It's apparently an island in Lake Michigan. It's basically up, you know, near like Traverse City and all that. Yeah, it's kind of, kind of Mackinac, kind of up in there. Right Emma shows up at the professor's door uh -oh. and introduces him to the rest of the cast. This is Paul and them. They restrain Sam with his own handcuffs and the nutty professor gets candid with the cracked open cranium. What the fuck is this shit? He thinks the blue slime came from last night's meteorite, which crashed into the town's Starlight Theater. We learned that from Bill earlier, since it foiled his daddy-daughter musical plans. Oh. We get there and the whole theater was exploded by a goddamn meteor! <laughs> Mamma mia! Luckily, Higgins has been hoarding supplies and preparing for this exact scenario. Uh -oh. Like exactly this? Exactly! <laughs> that the world would become a musical. You'd better believe it. He's yeah, got to examine the blue shit in his laboratory, and the others tag along so they can get their drink on. They leave Ted and Charlotte behind to grope on each other, right in front of a passed out Sam. Things getting a little Twin Peaksy in here. The guilt gets to Charlotte, who can't shake her feelings for her husband, even though he's an alien cop. A ticked off Ted leaves her alone with the keys, which is when Sam wakes up and tries to win her over with Jack Torrance inspired pleas. Charlotte, baby, I'm hurt real bad. I'm, I need a doctor. <laughs> Wendy. Baby, I think you hurt my head real bad. I need a doctor. It's not the only time he sounds like the Shining character. Charlotte, baby, apple of my eye. Wendy, stay away, <laughs> darling, light of my life. When he can't Nicholson and dime his way into her heart, he resorts to his trusty falsetto. Charlotte, you're breaking my heart, sha. Got my feet to the fire, just let me go. And I the dirty dancing finally wins her over, but freeing her husband leads to him freeing her oh! cat sweater. Oh, and now he's got her intestines in his mouth, which is kind of like a cat. It looks like Lucy with rainbow toy. The rest of the survivors are getting sauced on Hidgen's doomsday hooch supply. Emma and Paul have a heart to heart where she reveals she hates Hatchetfield and only returned after the death of her sister. My favorite things about the guy who didn't like musicals are its songs and its comedy, but what anchors it is serious scenes like this one, featuring great actors performing the hell out of their characters. The moment is interrupted by Charlotte, who's been transformed into a blue belt and scream girl. It is time Lord. to die! That's why, oh, that's why this test is blue. Oh, Lord. Hell yeah, get it, Jamie Lynn Beatty. She and Sam sing a duet dedicated to everyone who doesn't think I should count infections as kills. Join us and die. Charlotte? Join us and die. Oh, I'm sorry, what was that? Join you and what? And die. Great, that's what I thought you said. All you gotta do is... They're rescued by Higgins, who tick tick boomsticks Ooh. the new, but not before Charlotte can squeeze in a body snatcher reference. <laughs> 
I'll see you in the ultimate Sutherland. Hell! The close call leads Higgins to getting all McCready on his guests. So we're gonna have a little test to see who's still uh -oh. human and who's a musical thing. Uh, Is one of them gonna have to spend the rest of this musical tied to a fucking couch? Right? Nope, they just have to sing Moana. And they do it poorly, so they're not alien things. Bill gets a call from his daughter, Alice, who is currently trapped at Hatchetfield High with her girlfriend, Deb. Ted tells him his daughter's probably dead, but Paul offers to go with Bill and save her. The shotgun can come too. On their way over, Bill gives Paul his sad dad backstory. Alice lives with his ex-wife in the neighboring town of Clivesdale. Ugh. He disapproves of her dating Deb, but not because she's gay. He just thinks Deb's a slacker. Bill's played by Corey Doris, who went to U of M the same time I did. Oh, I wow. actually cast him in my awful junior year student wow. film called The Foiling, about a dude who gets his TV stolen. I acted in it too, Look as a good. business student. I wasn't good. But Corey, was. best actor in the whole thing, hands down. Wow. Paul tries to offer Bill some comfort, but Alice is flexing her pod person pipes Damn. by the time they find her. Her backup singers include Deb and the Lauren Lopez stoner character we saw before, so they both go on the count too. The song Not Your Seed is a jazzy little number driven by a piano and a hi hat. Not your seed. What is going on? I'm not your ACT. The lyrics are both emotional and a great showcase of Mariah Rose Fate's vocal talents. Did you know that I wanted to live with you? This was Faith's first Star Kid show. Oh, the following wow. year, she'd go on to play Regina George in the national tour of Mean Girls the Musical. Oh, nice. This triple threat is too much for Bill to handle, who contemplates turning the gun on himself. Paul manages to talk him down, but Alice still takes aim and gives oh, Bill a face full of fuck no. The alien hive mind is sick and tired of Paul, and tells him he will Why gotta be the black guy? Let me stop. <laughs> Join them in perfect unison. We have traveled across seas of stars, bounding, bounding. Well, perfect unison after a little more rehearsal. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Before they can harmonize Paul into the hive, the army runs in and sends the infected folks scattering pew pew pew. Don't get too excited, Paul. These guys are indiscriminate. Wait, 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 I I'm not one of them. I'm human. I'm yeah, prove mm. it, asshole, we're the army. Paul wakes up later and meets General McNamara, head of an X-File hunting military unit called Peep. You haven't heard of them. Not a peep. He's been given orders yeah, to wipe Hatchetfield off the map, which includes killing any loose-lipped loose ends like Paul. McNamara's a Magnum Maverick, though, so he offers Paul a deal. If his group can survive for two more hours, he'll send a rescue chopper to get them off this island. Armed with the American pastimes of guns and saluting, Paul sets off to retrieve his friends. Back at the bunker, Higgins and Emma are studying their alien specimens. Emma theorizes the infected townsfolk are being controlled by a central brain, and that destroying it might end the musical mayhem. Great plan, but Higgins is starting to sound a little off broad Broadway in the head. We could achieve what over 50,000 years of human civilization never could. World peace. He sticks Emma in the neck with a needle. Mmm, nap time juice. He ties her up alongside Ted, whom she is not a fan of, since, to be fair, Ted's an asshole. But while their characters have a combative onstage relationship, Lauren Lopez and Joey Richter actually got married earlier this year. Aww. Joey's a longtime friend of ours, who once joined us on Drunk Disney to watch nice. Lilo and Stitch. Professor Higgins has been drinking the theater kid Kool-Aid and thinks this alien invasion is the key to uniting the human race. Turns out he's always had a song in his heart, and he starts singing it in order to attract pod people to their location. Show-stopping number is another one of my favorite songs, especially when the drums kick in to join the piano part. A show-stopping oh number is something you die for. A real catchy, earwormy tune. I guess Higgins is more of a Dr. Frankenfurter than a Dr. Scott. Things go from don't dream it to wild and untamed thing when Higgins wants to workshop a song from a musical he's been writing. Do you mind if I give you the pitch? We don't have time. Fucking go for it. His show is called Workin' Boys and tells the story of old college chums reconnecting after they graduate to the business world. He gives an enthusiastic preview. Business calls, I'm up to my ass and shit. <laughs> What's this business? Biggest laugh of the show for me right there. But maybe that's just because I'm a sucker for business! Yes, I'm late for it. Pigeons is writing from personal experience, and it's not long before his real life but infected college chums come a knockin'. While Higgins leaves to toss the old pigskin, Paul sneaks in and frees his captive audience. They escape with the power of a scene change. Should I take this chair? Yes, I'll get the piano! The professor returns to fulfill his show stopping destiny, and he doesn't have to worry about choking on stage. He's already at the stage. Oh! So he can Choke on him! Having almost died, Ted decides to reconsider 
consider being an asshole all the time. He stops to make amends with Paul, but when a working boy attacks them, he abandons his redemption arc and his friends and runs straight to the chopper by himself. His celebration is cut short by a bullet, adding Daddy. him and General McNamara to the count since we learn that that guy's been infected off screen. He introduces Ted into the fold, and the United Troops launch into a militaristic, very Trump era tune. America's great again. But one last reminder that since we've never seen these other soldiers, they don't go on the count. Right. You get it by now, right? Emma and Paul arrive and are quickly attacked by the chorus front line. They manage to break free and get to the Choppa, where Emma celebrates Choppa. not dying in Hatchetfield. Fuck you, Hatchetfield! <laughs> but this time, their helicopter pilot ain't just double casting. It's Emma's infected co-worker, Zoe, who attacks them in a slow motion fight that crashes the helicopter. Paul makes it out with nary a scratch, but unlucky Emma's leg is more than just broken. Heavily injured and still stuck in Hatchetfield, they realize their only hope of survival is killing the alien hive mind, which must be in that meteorite that crashed at the Starlight Theater. Paul arms himself with a bunch of grenades and goes for a first kiss with Emma. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, maybe later then. Bye! At the Starlight Theater, Paul is confronted by his former co-workers, and also Emma's boss, whom he didn't really know. That's right, Paul. All your best friends are here. Being so close to the musical meteorite starts to take a toll on Paul, who can't help but loosen his belt. Let it out, let it out. Paul fighting his musical urges once more reminds me of Rocky Horror, where a D-Medusa Brad Majors got his world rose tinted. The climactic number almost wins Paul over, but he manages to put a pin in the singing while pulling a pin out of his grenade belt, blowing up the space rock to Kingdom Company. A news broadcast from Clivesdale, ugh, reveals the events of the musical have been blamed on a gas explosion. Luckily, not everyone is dead. Emma's managed to make it out and gets a new identity from the government. Even better, in true musical fashion, she gets a happy ending when Paul pops in to accompany her. Oh, that's nice. Why don't you tell her you love her, Paul? Emma, I'm sorry. Uh-oh. You love. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Paul launches into a reprise, revealing he's been brought into the alien hive mind. Damn it. Oh, Damn it. I get it. He's the guy who didn't like musicals. Yeah. Past tense. He likes yeah. them now. In a darkly comedic finale, yeah. the cast comes together to sing a medley of the show's music. You can hardly hear it, though, with Emma screaming in absolute <laughs> terror the whole time. Rude. She doesn't stop screaming, even into the curtain call. Wow. And the musical ends with Emma being Damn. dragged backstage to join the cast party. Did this Martian Damn matinee deliver a show-stopping body count? Let's find out and get... To the numbers, to so that's the. That's like rare, another rarity along with the Taste Chainsaw uh, prequel. And um, I think there's another movie that everybody died. I don't forget which one was that, but yeah, wow. The numbers, to the numbers. Hey, get to the numbers. To the numbers, to the numbers, oh, wow. to the numbers, hey, there. <laughs> get to the numbers, to the numbers, to the numbers, oh, to oh, the oh, numbers, oh, oh, hey, oh, oh. David, get to the numbers, to the numbers, to the numbers, to the numbers. Damn, James got affected. You know, being a sing-songy alien ain't all that bad. Sticking to our system, I counted 24 kills in the guy who didn't like musicals. The victims consisted of 15 men and 9 women, giving us this show-stopping pie chart. As far as who played the victims, John Madison only died once, while Lauren Lopez went on the count twice. I counted 3 kills each for characters played by Corey Doris, Mariah Rose Faith, Robert Mannion, and Joey Richter, while Jamie Lynn Beattie's characters were killed 4 times. Getting killed the most was Jeff Blinn, I whom we counted as a kill on 5 separate occasions. Nice, dude. With a runtime of 113 minutes, we had a kill on average every 4.71 so, minutes. I'll give the golden chainsaw for coolest kill to Shark. Sure, we all knew she was toast the second she freed Sam, but that gut ripping was a very I sudden jump in gore, especially for a live stage production. Dolph Machete for Lamest Kill will go to the first batch of infected townsfolk since it happened off screen. Or off stage, sorry. And that's it. The guy who didn't like musicals was released in 2018 and was followed by two sequels Black Friday, released in 2020, and Nerdy Proof must die which had its live run in la earlier this year next week is the blair witch project but until then i'm james a janice this has been the kill count hey everybody thanks a lot for watching the kill count for the guy who didn't like musicals and thank you all for showing up to do this fun little bit oh my god thanks for having us john i just met today yeah but i already like him a lot so oh, I, like, oh, yeah. I like being here <laughs> in one week Nerdy Prudes Must Die comes out on YouTube, is that right? That's right. Drops yeah. on YouTube. Okay. It's Team Star Kid on YouTube. But if you want to purchase the digital version with extra bonus features Ooh. or the album, you can go to TeamStarKid.com. What kind I, of uh, extra... I wonder if James wanted to do a kill cover for that. This was, this was, had been... 
a very interesting kill count, and I actually enjoyed it as well too. Not, I'm not saying because I'm not a big musical person like that. It's like the pins, but at the same time, this was interesting. Other than that, though, I, would I sit through this whole thing? I don't know. But as far as the kill count, it was very interesting how they did this. So yeah, other than that, if you like my reaction, like, share, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um. Next week's going, I'm just going to make it, I'm just going to make that either a free week or depends on my schedule. I know I'm, I'm, I'm off that whole week. I'm not, I know we, I'm not sure what time I am be back in the, back at our house, but at the same time, I'm off work that whole week, but it depends. I might do some kill, I might do some reactions while I'm there at the hotel with the, what work camera I have. Um, only going to do like spur of moment kill, um, not kill, kill spur of moment reaction videos, like something I must react to. If it's something that I know is not going to go away, I'm going to wait till I'm back at my lovely home to do it. But other than that, though, um, I still got, I still might do some stuff tomorrow and possibly, possibly Sunday. Who knows? But other than that, if you. It's your boy T Bird. Depends on my having some free time for packing and getting stuff set up or anything. But other than that, it's your boy T Bird signing off. One love.